Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's the one and only. It's your boy, Honcho J23. What's good to everybody? Hope everybody has had an incredible day. I hope y'all are uh, applying that pressure. Like I, like I tell y'all all the time, I hope y'all are keeping the strength alive, keeping hope alive, keeping faith alive. That's what it's all about. Um, tonight, I know it's a little late, but I know most of y'all end up being on your phones anyway. So I had to come live real quick because... There are, there are a few things that I want to kind of talk about real quick. Um, we got some, you know, first is some entertainment and celebrity news. I want to get some thoughts and opinions and feedback on it. As well as I got some other things I want to kind of discuss with y'all. So I'm going to wait real quick. I'm going to wait till a few people get I'm gonna wait till a few people get in here. And then we're going to start this live conversation up. Um, I noticed Instagram has finally um, put up a feature to where... You can now add, you can add now three more people or two more people to the live. So that's so that's dope. Salute to you, Instagram, um, for doing that. Shouts out to my man, K Man. What up? What up? What up? I see you in the building. Um, but yeah, like I said tonight, you know, I'm not gonna be before you long. But it, we're just gonna talk about a few things. Get a you know get a few feedbacks um, from this conversation. It's, it's gonna be a live conversation. Um, basically, we're gonna be speaking on trending topics. If, so if you if any of you artists is out there. Follow the trending topics. Uh, follow celebrity news, um, like I do. Then you know you'll, you you know this is the conversation that you want to be a part of. <clears throat> but with that being said, I want to kind of get into uh, real quick. What's good, Oxy? What's good, bro? So I kind of want I kind of want to get into um, you know my first topic of tonight. You know we recently just had the tragic death. And the loss of the one and only hip hop legend and icon DMX. Um, it's very sad to hear about what happened to him. You know, there were so many theories going around that was saying that, you know, he, he they thought he may have died from COVID. They you know, people were saying it was a heart attack, you know, and nowadays in the entertainment world you don't really know what to believe because the the what the media outlets and the blogs will put anything and everything out there. So we all know how that go. Us art, the artists is out, you artists is out there, and us being in the industry, we already know how that goes. But like I said, with that, I want to kind of bring some people in real quick just to get y'all opinion and what you know what DMX meant to y'all. So if y'all guys are available, you know what I'm saying, hit the request button. You know what I'm saying, let's go live together. Let's talk about it. Um, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about a few more things, and I'm gonna hop off here. But I just want to get a candidate conversation going real quick because I know it's a lot of y'all. Yeah, yeah, we exactly. We're gonna talk about Black Roger now. I, I'm I'm not. Uh, I've never heard of him until now, but um, definitely you know rest in peace to him, um, his entire family. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this candidate conversation going. I need you guys to, if you wanna come in this conversation and speak your piece, feel free. Um, or either I can randomly pick, you know, hopefully y'all will be able to respond. But um, but yeah, this is Hot Topic Night with Honcho J right here. You know, so I am the official host of Independent Saint the Podcast, which you can catch me every day weekly, you know what I'm saying, on Facebook Live or Instagram Live. Um but yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So, K okay, Man, you're going to be the first one up. I'm going to go ahead, since you already in, I'm going to bring you on up. Oxy, if you with it, bro, I'm going to bring you in too. So, we're going to get K Man in the building. And like I said, K Man, I want to get your thoughts and your opinions and feedback on this whole uh, worldwide tragedy with um, Dean. With the- let's get it. Yeah. What's Cool, man. What about you? Huh? I said I'm been exhausted as fuck. I tell you that. Yeah, man. It's it's. Well, I tell you, this being in hospital is it's, it's something. But at least now people are able to get back out. You know what I'm saying? Out there in the streets. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, well, even around the cold times, I've been in and out. You know, people don't even realize that shit. You know, why everybody was like, stay at home. I'm I'm working. You know, right? So somebody tell me like. They probably stay. You need to stay at home. You need to stay at home. I said, if my job didn't say, hey, we're closing down because of COVID, then guess what? I'm going to work. And then even if my job did, I'm going to look for work. I don't know what, what y'all doing, but. <laughs> right. When this, 
Yeah, and boy, boy, they get to that D the DMX situation, I heard too much. You know, I heard a lot. Like, I'm going to tell you that nobody don't say. See, the COVID part, definitely false. Uh, What the media been put, putting out with DMX situation was not true either. Um, what they, what they was true was the heart attack, but they ain't saying what caused the heart attack. The only thing they try to say, somebody try to say this. He overdosed like on others. He he overdosed, and the thing is, the me the his family said that was not the case, right? Because whoever say he overdosed, I'm like, what he overdose on, right? You did y'all couldn't y'all couldn't bring that to the table, so it's like, nah, he overdosed. I think no, what 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 he overdosed on, right? Because this was his family, right? That's the I'm telling. I hate to say I hate to say this. I, I mean, they might. Try to fact check you on this, but I don't give a damn. Social media need to chill with that shit. Right. Um, for real. This is what his family said. DMX took the COVID vaccine, right? Right. And that was the cause of his heart attack. Right. That's what his family's saying. Right. So I will believe his family over the media any day. Right. Right. With Black Rock, I just with other, like with his death, like, I'm going to tell you this. I grew up listening to DMX. Right. So it was like, I just saw it's like the first two albums here and there. Oh, uh, we'll bump, my family bump it to him. Like, <laughs> right. You know, and then listen to him now. I'm like, all right, I like, I like his, um, the stuff he came out with, you know? Right, right. And a lot of people don't understand that DMX, like his whole story, stuff about him, like some people might don't even know this about DMX. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing is nobody know. Before he started rapping, the same dude that got him into smoking crack and shit like that, mm -hmm. he used to beatbox. He used to be a beatbox. He used to beatbox with a dude, and the dude was rapping. He talked about it on his behind the music. Right. And and people be like, oh, no. He talked about it even um with, uh, I think it's Twa Blit Quali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. I yeah, I keep mispronouncing the dude's uh, pronouncing his name. I met the dude in person. Right. <laughs> wow. So it was like, now I meet mean, DMX a person, but Twab live. Okay. I met a person. Okay. So where he was basically telling the story how he got into that, mm -hmm. and that's like what he would talk about. It was kind of similar to like now I want to bring the friend stuff like. Her situation. Mm -hmm. You know, you be around people, you think they good people, this and that. And all of a sudden, they introduce you to something toxic. Mm -hmm. That's when you like, well, so one thing I can respect about DMX always, he didn't sell out or change his own style of music right? Um, to please the audience. Like, definitely to get a white audience. You know, everybody all poppy and shit like right. that. Right. No, he was just hardcore with it. He didn't talk about material things like popping balls, all that crazy shit that some rappers was talking about. Right. Definitely around the time he was coming out. Right, right, exactly. You know, and that's the thing, man, because when when we when we when we see these icons, man, like DMX, who truly, man, revolutionized revolutionized the game and really trailblazed and paved the way for so many up and coming artists, man, he definitely left well behind a, an illustrious career, man. Um, and, you know, me, myself, I, I'm a huge, huge, huge DMX fan. Most of all his songs, like you said, you know, I bumped to him a lot. And, you know, to, you know, to hear that another iconic legend like that is gone, man, it's, it's just heartbreaking. You know, one thing that I will say, man, is that, you know, I think one thing that people forget to realize is that DMX was human. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I realized that, you know, we all got fuck ups, we all got problems, we all got issues. But at the same but at the same token, why y'all gonna stone this man because of what he got going on? It's not it's not it's not like y'all are out there doing now if, now if you are out there doing it, I mean that's totally, you know what I'm saying, that's not our business. But the ultimate the, the bottom line is, you know, it's just like for example, going off side going off going off the uh, grid for a second. It's just like with the whole R. Kelly situation. Everybody, uh -huh. everybody loves R. Kelly. Everybody knows every single song, I'm sure, by R. Kelly. But when that, when that, when that shit broke out about him 
and you know him peeing on people and you know and holding women captured and all that i mean grant again we all got demons we all got our flaws but why stone this man all because of that when truthfully the the i feel like most of that was was all put into the music you know what i'm saying most of his music that, that we've all heard and listened to time and time again he he expressed he well he didn't as much but he expressed most of that in his in his music so in a sense it's like okay you pay attention to it it's like okay you know maybe some is yeah yeah like to me like at the point i wasn't really paying attention to that as much because anybody asked me like will you still this to r killer i said yeah even if i did will, will you bash me for it because if you're gonna bash me for it then i'm gonna just tell you this myself you know because you never know if somebody next door to you doing the same thing r kelly was doing it did um, and it was crazy. Uh, Dave Chappelle uh, talked about the stand up that they were trying to get him to go on surviving R. Kelly, right? Mm -hmm. And he turned out an offer. And they talk about some, he said some shit like, it's too hot for TV. He's like, no, that's not what I said. The reason why he said, the reason why he did it, he said, because I don't know R. Kelly. Right, right. He don't know, he don't know him. He had no associates or anything with the dude. So it's like any woman asks themselves, why do we, women be like, why do so much no rapists, uh, people that sexually molested or do stuff like that? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. In the man view, you better understand this. Any woman that look at this, it's because we don't want nothing to do with them. Because we hang out with them, you're going to assume we're just like that person. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. So, so that's why they ask me, it's like, no. Why do they go hang out with a certain group of people right. like that? Right. And, you know, and, and the funny thing, man, is, again, and I go back and it goes back to what I said before, you know, we we are, we, you know, we all are entertainers in our own right. We all have our own lane that we that we're that we're in. But if somebody like DMX, if somebody like R. Kelly, ha you know, are having these issues, that should be a re that should not be the reason why we pull away from that artist. You see what I'm saying? We shouldn't pull away from the artist because at the, because at the end of the day, just like we all need people to talk to, they may have needed people to talk to, and and, and granted, they may have not had people to talk to at the time. But at the but at the same token, why are we gonna sit here and tell and say, oh, we're not listening to this, we're not listening to their music no more. You know, we're not, you know, you know, we're not putting no more money into their shows, you know, in their movies, their events. And it's like, well, before all this came out, you was doing it before, but now all of a sudden, now that you hear one little piece of bad news and it traveled all around the world, now you saying, okay, you know what, I'm done. I'm not listening to it no more. You know what I'm saying? That's not for me. I can't, you know, I can't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't, um, I, I don't know. I, like, I can't respect that or I can't, I can't get, I can't get with it. So it's like, but yeah, you, but then again, the point goes back. You are spending your, but you didn't spend much time and time again on their, yeah, like, in their content. Yeah, like to me, it's like with deal, like with deal back situation. Yeah, some people knew he was on drugs. People, some people knew he was a crackhead. Mm. To me, if they ask, they talk about, will you still listen to him? Yeah, because number one, he's not like some of the rappers that's now these days. They praising pop and perks, this and that. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody come out praising smoking crack. I mean, I don't want to say it to be funny, exactly. but deal back, but deal back wasn't praising that. Right, right. Like for real, like what. I went all the way to Connecticut in November. Mm -hmm. All right. One song of DMX I played was Net Me Fly. And a lot of people don't, some people don't realize this. I talked about this uh, on Facebook. Like, the song Net Me Fly influenced me to write one song um, that I was, I haven't recorded yet. Mm -hmm. And that song, Net Me Fly, I was like, man, for some reason, Wow, right now I feel like the hook kind of reminds me of the hook of Let Me Fly. Mm -hmm. And and I and then I was watching this show on Netflix called You. Right. So that show, the TV show You, mm -hmm. and that DMX Let Me Fly influenced me to do that. And they ever asked me what influenced like because if you ever watch the show, I'm not going to get the details about the show like that if you never watch it. Right, right. Definitely, if you watch the first season, it was like. Happy. One person was having a little issue with the um 
with one of the characters because the character was like he was on some stalking shit to the uh to the chick he was with, mm -hmm. and she felt like he couldn't trust her, so she was like, "Ah, oh. just I, I just I feel like if you can't trust me, then we're we're group." Right. And then um, the song that me fly, it was like it was the hook of it. But it was like I was like, "Damn," because it was like let me fly or give me death. For some reason, me saying if you don't trust. If you don't trust me, then it can't be no what some shit like that. Right. So it was like, um, right there. That's why I'm like, DMX don't let me fly to me. That kinda, uh, in some shape or form, helping doing that during the grief during my griefing time. I'm still griefing to this day, you know. Right. So it's like, the grief there to what happened to the close friend that, um, passed is still gonna be there, you know. Right. She got. I mean good person, but got caught with the wrong crowd. Right. That uh, this kind of like similar to the MX situation. Mm -hmm. Instead of her, I don't want to get into too much details about it, like doing the uh, smoke, like smoking the drug, she ended up got caught doing she ended up doing the drug, but she was hiding it from some people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So people, before she passed, people her family tried to reach out, look out for her, this and that. She ain't telling me what was going on, so I ain't know what was going on. Right. So it's like with their mech situation, it could have been people trying to help them out, trying to tell them, like, look, you got to get off of this. You got to get off of this. But the thing is with their mechs is he, he had to seem like one of the realest dudes because a lot of people say with their mechs, he'll let you know if he rocks with you if he don't rock with mm -hmm. you. He's not going to fake it. And then he's not going to be like, yeah, I'm this big star. Mm -hmm. I'm going to treat you like you're below me. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. That And that's the thing is, I can, that's that's what Air Store Day said about them. Actually, he was at least a humble dude. Right, he was. Um, that, and that he was. And see, and you know, and, and that's the thing, man, because, again, you know, when you think about, when you think about the, the legacy that this man has, you know, put out here for generations to generations, man, you think about it, it's like, you know, you would like to think that people like that, you know, uh -huh. you know, wouldn't, in a sense, experience stuff like that. But when you see it and you hear it, it's like, no, ain't no way. But then when it's brought to fruition, like, at some point, social media, the whole world knows that. And then, you know, you got everybody, you know what I'm saying, coming come, come with their own opinions, their own assumptions, their own theories, their own logic. And it's like, it's only one thing, it's only one logic it's only one mindset that can that can equivalate to all of this. So, and that's got to come from the source. What so whether that was DMX himself, you know, putting it out there and letting us know, like, look, you know, I'm on, you know, I'm doing this and I'm not doing good, or like you said, he could have just been hiding it and didn't want to say that because he felt like people was gonna do him just like case in point, just like how they did with R. Kelly. He felt I felt like he feels like if he would have said something. Oh yeah, it would have been one of those situations where it's like, oh no, I can't fuck with him because he's doing this, he's doing that, blah blah blah. Yes, yeah. The dance with DMX, I don't think he ever hide that he had a drug problem at all. Right. He, cause it was like people he was close to, they knew about it a little bit more than other people did. Like certain incidents that he got caught up in, some people don't realize that that could have been drug related or could have been him on it right. stuff so it's like some people thinking oh he passed away through drug no that's somebody in the media talking they ain't get no information from no doctors that information didn't come from his uh, um, manager or former manager right in that case that information didn't come from them and they basically said well at first before people were saying RP DMX and all this stuff they say he was still on life support at the point and then they decided to announce that he passed. Mm -hmm. So it's like right there. And I'm going to tell you what fucked me up the most. You know how everybody was all praying, word, mm -hmm. for future with DMX? I end up finding out, and I found out from the media, somewhere in the media, they talked about Black Rob before he passed. Before he passed. Mm -hmm. Black Rob was paying homage to DMX while he was in the hospital, while he was hospitalized. <laughs> I did hear about that. I did see that, and I did hear about I was like, wow. Yeah, that's because, and I'm going to tell you, before Black Rob passed, I predicted that he was going to be the next rapper to pass. And, like, people, 
people don't think it. Like, y'all thinking I'm playing when I'm predicting stuff like this. Because when that shit really happens, you be like, Oh, this and that. Mm. You're gonna be thinking like, oh, he knows every he think he knows everything, this and that. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. Oh, I know who the fuck this is. <laughs> Night, whoever. Oh yeah, the Tennessee the Tennessee girl. I know who that is. Oh. <laughs> but, but anyway <laughs> anyway, let me get back to it. Um what I was talking about, uh okay. See and I was kept pointing out, like, look, as much as we care about if DMX make it alive, I just wanna be alive, I mean and able to move and be walking again. Right. Why in the world um, that we couldn't do the same thing for Black Rob? And I'm like, okay. But some people, and it, and so you never heard a song like, whoa. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That, that was Black Rob. Right, right. That's like, nobody, I'm like, nobody remember Black Rob? Yeah, that. Like, that. Yeah, whoa. Was- and then he was on the, <laughs> Then him and Mace, he was on the track with Mace on uh, 24 Hours to Live. Oh, yeah. It was Mace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Mace, DMX, Deluxe, and Black Rob was on that same record. So I remember um the shit on uh, this. I remember um one of my um close friends that passed, mm-hmm. her older sister was like, I hope they made some of that. I just didn't, I just when they're both like in heaven. I was like, I told her that. They made a track. To, they was on the track together when they were alive. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I end up thought, and then still about hours later, I said, "Yo, let me hear one some part of that verses of Twenty Four Hours to Live." So all of a sudden, they um, then all of a sudden, I played play some parts of uh, DMX verse, and then some part of um, Black Rob. I was like. Yeah, like people, yeah, people forgot about Black Rob, but I'll tell you, him signing with Diddy mm-hmm. was that maybe was that fucked up uh, situation in in that point because mm-hmm. everybody's trying to blame Diddy for what happened with Black Rob. Right, right. I did hear, no, I did hear that. I heard about that as well. And you know, and, and see, and that's another thing, man, because when you look at the industry as a whole, you have all these rappers and entertainers who have either been a part of groups or, you know, have done things on their own. <clears throat> and when you hear such things, you know, like, you know, the demons that they're fighting, it's like, yo, never in a million years would you think that, you know, either the people that they're rocking with is setting them up in some kind of way, you know, trying to, you know, you know, make it seem like they're better than this. Like you said before, you know, make it seem like they're better than or whatever or, you know, whatever the case may be. So it's like, you know, and I always say this, I feel like, you know, if there is beef, you know, within this industry, my my strongest advice to all artists out there, it's not enough beef in the world that you that two people can't come together and continue to make great music because at the end of the day, you going back home, you going your way <clears throat> and the other person going their way. So at the end of the day, are you are you going to continue to sit back and want to bicker and and bicker and you know go back and forth on Twitter and Instagram, or you rather make money like you like you're doing now, you know, and put out great music so that way people can look back and be like, yo, like even though these two these two, these two people had beef, but they were they were the big enough men and they you know and they grew up and they you know threw that shit to the side. I'm like you know what? Because yeah. it's not about that. You know what I'm saying? Life is short, as they say. Yeah, it's like what makes it worse is what it been put on social media. It's like this is what I was trying to uh tell some some people like keep it on the mic. Mm-hmm. Like keep it on the mic. Instead, some people want to put it on street stuff and all that garbage. And some of these guys are not some of these rappers are not really about it. Mm-hmm. And I and that's the thing is I can I hear every like I don't even wanna talk bad about some North Carolina artists, you know, I already feel some type of way about rappers in North Carolina not want to work with me or anything like that. And they were asked me why I said, because collaboration wise, some of y'all does in this view, y'all don't try to step out of y'all elements. Mm-hmm. Y'all want to be bar bar, oh this dude got the same style as me. I said, do you try to change it up and try to attract a different type of audience? Mm-hmm. Like that's what that's why some rappers collab. Because some rappers like yo I'm not going to build a thing where I have somebody have the same type of audience as me or rap about the same thing as me. I'm not going to build no type of audience. Mm-hmm. But if I 
hear with somebody that has a different sound than me and this and that, I might get build that type of audience and that fan base and grow. That type of fan, like, come on, like, right? For me, my that's the thing. It's so, it's so many, <clears throat> it's so many avenues, man, to this to this game and this industry that we're all in, man. And when you think about it. You know, any time that a collaboration is put into play or put in the and put in the full put in the full stride, it's like the music is gonna be is gonna be great regardless. Now, you know, there are there are some artists out here that feel like, oh well, like you said, this person is trying to steal my shine. But why even going why even going to that mindset thinking that your brother or your sister out here is trying to steal your shine? They're not trying to steal your shine. Because my thing is if they was trying to steal your shine, they would all uh, they would go ahead and already put it on front stream like look, yeah, I'm trying to you know, I'm trying to be the best. I'm trying to, you know, be the top dog, blah 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 blah. But if they not coming at you with that type of vibe, then why then why insinuate and why assume that just because somebody verse may be hotter than yours or the ver or a track may be, you know what I'm saying, better, you know, why why create that beef? You know what I'm saying? You just, if anything, you as the artist need to go back and be like, okay, you know what? If I know this is the type of if I know this is the type of vibe that he bring in, then I know I gotta come twenty times harder. So that way it make the song that much better, make people uh, make a whole lot of people fuck with and then at the, and then by that point everybody gonna be either streaming it, singing it, or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? Yeah, cause it's like like I'll be hearing like I just be seeing that because it's like what that's like what made me feel like now in these days it's like work it's like work with anybody like with like definitely with the beef and stuff they doing i'm like look if you're not a street dude don't act like it if you don't rap about it in your raps definitely you don't want to do it in this day and age definitely if you live in certain states certain states certain days you stay in your rhymes they trying to use that to punish you and they trying to do it by law even though they've been doing that to certain rappers in certain states they're trying to do it by law. So imagine like the time, like, you know, how DMX can rap out that hardcore shit, talk about how he was robbing and stealing mm -hmm. from other people. If you rap about that now, mm -hmm. in certain states, mm -hmm. they, I'm not sure they pass it in Merlin. Mm -hmm. This is what I heard they was doing in Merlin. They were trying to pass a law, say certain things you say in your rhymes, they could try to convince you with that. So it's like, yeah, that's, and that's the thing is, and I, when I look at that, it's like, yo, they're trying to do everything to kill hardcore rap music. It's like, man, you might as well just be a fucking conscious artist, and that's what they don't even play. Right. Is that exactly. and, on, on, and and then it's like to me, that's why it's like everything that's going on, like with DMX passing, Black Rob passing, they talk, and then with Diddy uh, naming the mix of Black Rob stuff. I'm like, the only problem I would say about that is. Him eating off his artists, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that's what is the worst case scenario. Is this dude is eating off his own artists, and nobody in this situation is really not knowing that, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it may be somebody had a Diddy that's also part of that too. Mm -hmm. So it can't be only just Diddy because with Black Rob, they'll talk about he was. I'm not sure. They say he was homeless, mm -hmm. and then he ain't had no health insurance. So I'll say, I say, I think I saw something along those lines, but I didn't go. Back, I got to go back and read the full story. But I think I heard. Something. Yeah, I got to go back and look at the whole video or something like that. We talk because I mean, I'll share a video about you know, and I watched it one time about him struggling mm -hmm. uh, with his health and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like right there, that really uh, throws everything off. So, uh, that's why I'm looking at people that are doing these R.I.P. Black Rob all this other shit. I'm like, the fuck y'all was at? Like, I was the one pointing this stuff out. Where the hell y'all was at? Right. Like, that's why... Go ahead. That's why it's like, with a lot of this shit going on, I'm calling people bluffs out on certain things. They tell me about these, uh, these other younger rappers that's coming out there passing. I'm like, the thing is, I don't listen to a lot of these new rappers. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I don't got nothing against them. I don't listen to NBA Young Boy. Um, I don't listen. I didn't listen to King Von. I didn't listen to Pop Smoke. Only heard about Pop Smoke because he had an issue. Him and the rapper I listen to that's locked up right now on Casanova. Mm -hmm. It's uh, they had a little little problem, a little silly ass beef. Uh, to me, and it didn't look like it was actually real because. 
they, you see them can't him and pop smoke came together mm -hmm. and it seemed like it was all cool and for entertainment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's like it's just is that it just it just showed you how much that was i mean that could have did that for exposure for both of them during that time mm -hmm. and so it's like um but some of these young rappers that's passing it's something going on because the energy they bring in and some people can say it's the industry. Sometimes it's not the industry mm -hmm. or anything like that. It could be some of the people they were surrounding themselves with, just like with Mac Miller. Mm -hmm. Mac mm -hmm. Miller's situation, to me, I feel like it was the people who he surrounded himself with. Mm -hmm. You know, that right there tell you can't can't be around a big circle of people, big circle of people, because if nobody wasn't looking out for him when he was on, when he relapsed on them drugs and all that shit, mm -hmm. what that tells you, even if you know it or not, what could happen? You know, the same thing happened to uh, my friend Melissa. Like, she was around a group of dudes, or there's not when she actually passed, she was around certain dudes. She was basically dating some dude. I don't even like the guy. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I hear the dude's name, it puts me in that rage, like, yo, I want to come after this guy. Because, mm -hmm. one, you try to sabotage my friendship with somebody that I knew longer than you, then on top of that, you try to, you introduce her to a lifestyle that lead her to be corrupt, or just corrupted, like, mm -hmm. got, like, end up gotten in trouble again over some crazy shit. I don't understand what it was. Mm -hmm. And then, um, what else uh, happened? You introduce her, somebody, and the people he was around introduced her to drugs. So it's like with Mac Miller's situation, somebody had to introduce him to that lifestyle. Mm -hmm that got him in that situation. And, you know, he's, and it seems like Mac Miller, he was on his way to do something great. I mean, and it's like, I don't always believe the good die young. I believe some of the good die young, and I believe some of the old die young. Mm -hmm. And I can feel like what Jonah Lucas said, it's the, um, the devil's work, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that it could be that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's how, and, and people thinking like, he, uh, people thinking like, oh, he's trying to test God, or this question God, this and that. No, y'all took devil's work way out of line the same way they took, um, what is it? They took, yeah, they took the devil's work way out of line as the song, um, I'm not a racist that he had. Because that song, I'm not a racist, the only thing that I didn't like what she would speak, the view he speaks for somebody black, on a black dude's view. Right. Well, I'm not a racist. That, his his rebuttal wasn't, everybody said, wasn't strong. His rebuttal, right, right. he could have came with a stronger rebuttal to shut that down, because with me, you come with a, I'm not a racist debate, and you white, I'm going to shut you up. I'm going to get you to a point, it's like, you can't say nothing back about that. You can't be going around saying, yeah, I'm yeah. not a racist, da-da-da. I can tell you the same thing. I can say I'm not a racist, da-da-da-da, but at the same time, with well, that's on the devil's word. Well, all the good die young, or one of the greatest is dying young, or one of the best rappers passing, like DMX. Okay. It's like somebody could think, oh, that maybe was the devil's work. I said, I don't know. Who knows? You know? Right. It may be... To a point where Dale Max said maybe was his time to go at that point. Right. And you know, and the funny thing about it, man, well, I ain't gonna even say it was funny, man, but to be honest with you, man, again, and, and, and I will keep saying it, but when you have someone who not only revolutionized history, but when you got somebody who has left a mark on the entire nation and on somebody, you know you have successfully done your job, but mm -hmm. but yes, there will there will come hate. There will come people that bring negativity your way. You you will cross those paths, but there again, why let something like that make you question your your immorality, your your morals, your values on how you are going about the world? Because the way I, the way I see it in my mind, again speaking on DMX. 
you know, we all knew, like you said, we all knew that, you know, DMS was going through issues. We all knew that he had problems. But at the same time, there's no need to throw stones at him and make him make him out to be the bad guy just because he's just because he got a drug problem. Yeah. Now granted, you know, drugs can do some pretty, you know, major things to people that can cause people to, you know, go off the ramp. But at the end of this but at the end of the day, what if that was somebody in your family? In your in your, mm-hmm. You're going to do everything in your possible power, even when they don't want to hear it or not. You're going to do everything in your power to make sure that that person sticks around and stays alive. No matter how, no matter how, no matter how crazy the situation may be, you're just not going to just sit there and just let this man destroy himself. Now, I can't say you got some people that may have said, you know, I tried talking to him. I tried venting to him. You know, I tried telling him to do this and this and this and that, but he just won't hear it. But that's what that's what it's all about. You gotta keep talking to him, no matter how no matter how stressed that you may be, because eventually because eventually somebody gonna pay attention, somebody gonna start listening. And Neil, he, he, you know, he could have got that help. Now, granted, there was something that I read along somewhere back in the back a couple of months ago where he had gotten clean, he had gotten straight, and he was doing good. Yeah, he had came back. You know, we all saw him. He had came back out. He was doing his thing. And now all of a sudden we get, we come to this point, and now he's just like that, up and gone. Like how do like how does that happen? How do we go from you know doing bad to doing good to doing bad again? And now all of a sudden now there's no more of you. Yeah, that shit. That shit to some people just don't make sense. You know, it's like you see like oh you kind of your right mind see me. I don't, I don't know how to describe the type of person I am. I really don't. I'm still trying to figure myself out, you know. Right. And I'm and I'm in my late twenties. So when I seen something about like a person that was seem like they trying to get their self together before they pass. Right. That's when I'm like, yo, I noticed something before they pass. Even though they wasn't in the best shape. They was trying to get itself back into that. She with them, Max. She was already in that situation. She was already. It was just people thinking, oh, it was a. He was on drugs. I said, first of all, we know how Dmx looked like when he was on drugs. He looked this skinny. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. Right. Masking. Right. So it's no way he was actually on them drugs. So I'm like, That's where y'all getting this information from? Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and and again, you know, that's why I try my hardest not to believe everything that the media says, because like I said, the media could put out any and everything and people will be so quick to believe it. And then we start, then we start drawing our own conclusions, our own, our own theories. And it's like, okay, is this really the, 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 the mindset that we're going with? Or are we just going off just based off of the fact of what we heard, and we just taking it, taking it, and run with it. Like we got to yeah, that's yeah, that's what I see, man. That's why I be seeing sometimes people might. Um, I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to interrupt you, but what I've seen is a lot of people are coming going, and some of them is end up being like whatever somebody says, and then somebody believe it. Like mm-hmm. they try to like some dude who didn't want to tell. My friend, I tell my friends her family what really happened mm-hmm. with her death. He was one, he was walk around Durham. They was making up lies like, "Oh, she died in her sleep." I said, like, oh, "You, you think I'm stupid, huh?" If they would have came to me with that, I, y'all think I'm stupid? Right. You think I was born yesterday? Like, no, man. Some some fishy stuff happened. Right. So if y'all don't want to tell them what's going on, I'm telling you this: if I drop you today and I say, "Yo," Just, if I say some stuff like, "Hey, he died from what? He just jumped off. I just he just jumped off the building." Like, mm-hmm. will you believe that? Right. If you believe that, you crazy. People gonna be. Like, I'm saying, and that's what I'm saying. People gonna be quick to believe it. It's like, wait, if you, it's like, it's like they used to always say, if you weren't there, then how can you say what really happened? Yeah, like. Like that's what they do. My situation, like with that situation, they talk about something. But like, you wasn't really there. But you wasn't really there. But I said, look, I heard people told me information. Her family told me something. One of her, 
parents told me something. Right. So it's like, I'm going to believe the parent over anybody because they kind of, they know what was going on. Right. You know, I don't want to know what's going on. Like with DMX family, I'm going to believe what DMX family was saying over what? The media. Right. And and then they say information about this and that. I'll say, I don't know that's true. You know? Mm -hmm. Like everybody make it up. A lot of false stories. That's why I'm like, y'all need to go back to remember what Denzel Washington said about the media. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the truth. They don't. They don't care about the. They don't care about the truth, and they said they just care about being first. Right. So, so it's like, that's why I get some information about Denzel Washington. I say, y'all know Denzel Washington don't put his information about himself on the media. The only time you hear about him on the media was if he's by the if a movie about to come out mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's it. You don't see him in no Hollywood and the, in the lime life. Right. Oh, yeah, I know. I know, um, homie. Yo, it's good. But anyway, it's like nobody knows that. So it's like with the media, you can't fight for everything. It's like, as I told somebody, like, so you'll believe that Prodigy, like when they say about Prodigy from Mob D, mm -hmm. when they say he died choking on the egg, mm -hmm. I say, nah. Somebody killed that dude. Right. So they're like, oh, but that, that like, no. Right. Have you choked on eggs before? Have you met anybody that choked on the egg? Hell no. And they talk about some, but well, what if they ate the eggs? Y'all say, how dumb do you sound right now? Right. Like, you even make yourself sound dumber and dumber to believe that stuff. Right. That's why I tell anybody about DMX situation, nah. It's a, it just don't make any sense. And you know, and, and another thing, not to cut you off, man, but you know, when you when you think about all these celebrity deaths that have taken place, you know, you we got, you know, you got Pop Smoke, you got DMX, you got Nipsey Hustle, you got Black Rock, mm -hmm. you know, you you had, you know, you had people like Aaliyah, you know, all these mm -hmm. this man, Michael Jackson, all these people, James Bray, you had all these legends and icons who literally changed the fucking game. And now, mm -hmm. all, and now, mysteriously, they all are no longer here. And so, yeah. I kind of, in a sense, and on once, on one hand, it's like I feel like you, like how you said, it. I feel like it was some fishy stuff going on, and the world didn't want to know about it. But then, on the other hand, I feel like, granted, maybe they could have, you know, just up and died on their own, and we won't never know that unless you know their, fa unless that person's family comes forward and says. You know, this person died from this, and then we and then we run with that. But if we're not hearing it from the family, because you know you got families that say, such as celebrity family, they'd be like, "Oh well, we're gonna keep this quiet. We're gonna keep this private because we don't want the whole world knowing." And then you know, because you're gonna have basically I hate to say it like this, but you gonna have people that say, "Oh, the moment we put out this type of information, they just gonna dick ride." Now, how how many times? Have we all seen the moment somebody big in the in, in the entertainment world die? Social media goes crazy. You see, yeah. you see nothing but posts and pictures of people of regular people like us, either with these celebrities on stage in the same room as them, have been, maybe have been in the same been at the same event, and now everybody's saying, "Oh, I'm a DMX fan," or "I'm a Nipsey Hussle fan." But like you said, it's like. When they was putting out music, were you really taking in what they were saying? Was you really paying attention to the messages they were putting in this music, or was you just yeah. bopping? Or was you just bopping it because you because the song was hot and you was just like, "Oh, God, this is my shit" type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's like with DMX, this is thing is, if you my ex, I was like, man, I was a kid when right. DMX came out. Right. So it's like some of the music did not. I didn't understand it. It mm -hmm. didn't go back and listen to it. Like and listen to the song "Stop Being Greedy." Right now, I understand what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. I just about that song because you know, moms used to, my mom used to play it a lot, and then his song Trina Bow. I understand a little bit what that song's about. I mean, and then where the hood at, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, to me, a lot of people being say this and that. I said, nah, younger me when might not wouldn't understand it until now, but it's crazy. It's like an older generation, they thinking like. 90s, like 90s kids are just dumbasses, mm -hmm. or we don't got no manners, we this and that. Let me tell you this. If you consider a millennial and you born in the early 90s, you know you got some damn common sense. Don't, that's why I rather tell some of these people, like, I want to tell some older people, like, don't compare 
a 27 year old at this age to an 18 year old. Mm -hmm. We're nothing alike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not going to act alike. We're not going to think alike. Maturity level with me, for my age, I'm just mature, period. Like, just mature. Right. So, what I don't be liking sometimes is people assuming my age. You know, I don't like when women do that shit. I'd be wanting to tell a woman, like, yo, will you like if I assume your age? Right. You like if I try to guess your age? Do you like it when other people assume your age? Right. Or stuff like that? Right. And, and don't do it. And don't do it. Right. Don't do it to dudes. Does it, I feel you where you're coming from. As it, and this is why I say, you know, that's, that's where this beef comes in. Because everybody want to beef. Everybody want to be great. Everybody want to be the best. Everybody want to be the top dog. You're not gonna always. Yeah. Be, you're not gonna always be the top dog. That's just not gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? You may be in the same conversations. You may be in the same room. You may be on the same set, the same video, the same song. But at the end of the day, it's all about the message. And the message should simply be this. You know what I'm saying? Is that if we can make music together and make money together, then we can cut out all this beef because that's just publicity. Case in point, like the whole young, Four, you? like the, like the case for like the whole young Jeezy and Gucci situation, they yeah. had beef apparently. So that so the media says, and then right at the end of that verses, they both shook hands like two grown ass men, and and went on about their business and and had a, and finally gained a mutual respect for one another because they realized that this this whole back and forth, back and forth, back and forth shit wasn't working, and nine times out of ten somebody. In the, either heard it and believed it, or somebody was like, "No, nah, that's not the that's not the Jeezy and Gucci that I know." Yeah, they, and they say that by like with Gucci Mane appearance, mm -hmm. and it's and then with Jeezy, they talk about this that no, the thing is that street lifestyle. You some point you got to grow out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you gonna be walking, or you just gonna be a childish grown man. That's why it's like with certain people, they be like. Oh, this ain't the K man. I know this and that. I said, first of all, I've been the mature one mm -hmm. the whole time. I just can hang out with certain crowd, mm -hmm. with certain crowd people. I can see something wasn't right about them, and they they like compare eighteen year old K man to twenty seven year old K. The only difference about eighteen year old K man, he didn't know about the music industry or much about that a lot mm -hmm. compared to now. He ain't on no publishing. He ain't on no rights. He was just going to fucking open mic. Cause this is before Carolina Wave came. I just came around. This was before um I heard about Trey Mars and all the other guys. Cause I don't know what they was doing during that time. And this mm -hmm. was in 012. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what they was doing. Mm -hmm. So if they thinking I'm just like, oh, I'm the reason. No, I'm not the reason why Carolina Waves exists. I'm not the reason why any of these open mics or any of these hip hop artists are. Coming around in Durham, I can say I put my foot involved and say, "Look, they may be musicians here, this and that. Mm -hmm. If they don't like it, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to perform my ass off." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when it comes to a lot of artists, they don't understand. It's a if sometimes you're going to have to grow as a person, mm -hmm. and your music going to have to grow right along with you. If you don't like that this person ain't talk about dumb shit like like I hear now these ways, doing drugs. I f a rapper so some of these male rappers talk about I fuck your bitch. I shoot another nigga. I'm like, look, man, I ain't with that, and that's not what I was about, and that's what I wasn't going to be. That's not what I'm going to rap about. Mm -hmm. and that's what other rappers that's not about that shouldn't even do. You know, right? You know, and definitely if you admit it, like Slim Jesus, that's the reason why his ass ain't relevant no more, because. He was rapping about something, and he meant that he wasn't living. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's and everybody talk about support real hip hop, support real hip hop. Time out, throw the key out the window. What the hell is real hip hop? What makes hip hop fake? Mm -hmm. Do you know the history of hip hop? Mm -hmm. this day, I was still learning on the music part, and they asked me about the graffiti. I'm just gonna be still learning to do that too. I'm still learning about the history of it. A lot right. of people thinking that. We just come to our own music. No. I mean, I learned from the, the Paneers, one of the greats, even though this dude say possibly in a battle he could beat Eminem, mm -hmm. uh, Manly Mel, he'll tell you rappers were separate on 
different types of beats. We'll mi they'll mix a different type of genres together: jazz, blues, mm -hmm. rock, all that shit. See, a lot of, and then I won't be surprised they mix reggae involved with it and hip hop. So it's like, come on, that's why I look at all these people like they gotta change it up. It's like, oh, uh, let me see this. This shit is my style. Like, oh, I'm not, I I can't rap off this beat. I said, look, you're gonna fuck up when you're not part of something that. Um, became a real impact or something, you know. That's how, I, like, we're all about the bitch with the locks. Mm -hmm. They uh, there's one of for the locks. I think it's Sheet Loak who don't get talked about as much. Mm -hmm. Um, because he's like the underdog. Mm -hmm. And I feel like to myself, that's how I feel like in the North Carolina scene, I'm the underdog. Because mm -hmm. the same people that's noticed, like Lena Jackson, um, Juice Lord, mm -hmm. Black Trail. Uh, XL, all all the other ones that's kind of known, even uh, Maestro, even though she's on and off the scene, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, I still get respect from those artists, and th people don't realize that. Right. I get that respect. And they talk about people always respect because of personality. I say it could be personality, it could be me as an artist rapping, you know, and yes, in the twenty in the twenty tens, yes, I doubted myself. Mm -hmm. The twenty twenties, not really. Man, the only thing I tell. I tell anybody, music wise, do am I doing as much as I did the last decade? Right. Because that last decade, I was trying to prove something. Mm -hmm. This decade, I'm like, I'm not even trying to prove much. They asked me, am I going to put out more material than I did the last decade? I said, I don't know. I don't know what the future is going to look like because I'm not only just working on music, I'm working on stuff outside of music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you see the shirt, like you like people don't see the shirt I'm wearing. Like I'm like this is a shirt I made to honor my friend. Like okay. you know, okay. like when it said "Long Live," I'm not sure you can see what it said "Long Live Miosa." Okay, yeah, that's and I had a not a tattoo on the right chest on the honor. I, so you know, I saw that. Yeah, so it's like, and I and I think some people who don't take me serious on that, I'm like, let me show these ads. I really don't like showing people that oh. I'm actually doing some good stuff to so arm that person. Guess what? I was like, fuck it. I'm going to put this out here so people can know when I'm selling these type of shirts or something like that, I'm not lying when I say it's going to go to a local nonprofit or anything. And yes, these shirts, every time I donate, I just make some money off these shirts or something like that. Wherever, how much I make around the time or so, some of this money of it is going, some of it's going Come uh, to say what to me for me, like if I want to make more shirts and stuff, and so if it's gonna go to what a local nonprofit in her hometown. So, if anybody asks me, I'll say, Well, I'm forget about Durham. I say, I ain't gonna forget about Durham. I'm not gonna forget about you know, it's crazy. Yeah, Dur Durham is where I'm from. So, Durham, Durham got a lot going on. Some people be sleeping on Durham, but Durham, they, 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 you know, they, they, they got some, they got some hitters out there in Durham, you know what I mean. Yeah, like with, like I'm, cause when people, even with, uh, definitely with artists and music, you know, like with OZ the Hitmaker, I might not be talked about compared to him, but at the same time, them, them same artists got what? I got their respect. Mm -hmm. They asked me what Harvey J, I don't know. Cause Harvey J is in a whole different world right now. Like, we don't know what's going on with Harvey J. Mm -hmm. You know, I went, it, it, speaking of that, I went to high school with Harvey J. Okay. Yeah. Me me and Harvey J went to Riverside. I know his I think his freshman and sophomore year. Okay. He was in uh he went to Southern. Mm hmm I think he relocated because he was gonna do so much he was going through so much at Southern, you know, being bullied and all that mm -hmm. other shit. And that's why I'm that's what I was hearing. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I don't I wasn't there to witness or see that happen. And then he transferred to Riverside. Okay. And so that's how I heard of Harvey J. Okay. So before he went to Atlanta, before he came with his Hennessy recipes, I, I knew who Harvey J was. It's just to me, I feel like he wanted to try something different. So it's like, with, and then before he started wearing robes and at this, I said, around time, he was, he would start growing, growing his hair. Right. You know, and had the locks. So it's like, a lot of people don't realize it's like, yeah. I was there around that time. It just, I wasn't talk about like that. Because if you look at the quality of music I came out with during that time, it didn't seem like it was, I was worth talking about in that same room as them. 
you know. But since the quality step up, you know, um, from why Star Wars track project from religion versus the world random, I say, you ask me, I say, I'd rather say BR2 and religion versus the world is one of my, um, now these days, that's one of my two favorites. Religion versus the world is definitely my favorite. Mm-hmm. Since the COVID and all that, because I feel like some that's going to talk about what goes on, what is going on around, COVID, around this COVID day. Because the whole world is just feel like it's been shut down. Some people being brainwashed and stuff like that. So it's like, with other than that, it's like this this whole music scene in like North Carolina and outside of North Carolina. Some people don't realize this that it's bigger than that. It's like North Carolina. Uh, this the scene is bigger than that. Like what's happening with these hip hop artists uh, all over the world is getting known, and it's like you like. Let's say locally you're known. Right. When you pass, that scene going to rock or just going to notice about you or something like that. And some of the local North Carolina artists, I haven't been to some of their funerals, not because I didn't want to go or didn't know them. It's just I ain't get the invite or get the input. Facts. You know? I feel that. I feel that. And you know, and this, and this is why I'm glad we were able to have this conversation because – Conversations like these have to be had. You know what I'm saying? I want to say thanks to you, you know what I'm saying, for, you know, giving your input and tapping in and really, you know what I'm saying, putting, giving us, you know what I'm saying, your feedback. I'm going to be doing more of these candidate conversations um, on Instagram Live. I probably, I probably will do them around this time. So I definitely want you guys to tap in and check in. You know what I'm saying? Came out, I want to say thank you, like I said, again, for tapping in with us, man. I definitely want to continue to get deeper and go deeper into these conversations, man, because these are conversations that need to be had. But, you know what I'm saying, unfortunately, my time is up. You know what I'm saying? I want to take. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, tapping in, came in, shots out to you on everything that you got going on. Make sure you guys tune in. Again, I will be going back live again. Um, sometime in the AM, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that because we're going to keep these conversations going because, like I said, you know, these these are conversations that can literally save people's lives and really help people. So I hope that you guys got a lot from this tonight. You know, this is just part one. This is just ep- this is episode one of my new my new segment called Candidate Conversations with Hancho J. Hope you guys will stay tuned in for more because there's going to be more to come. But with that being said, I love y'all. I thank y'all and I support y'all just like y'all support me. Okay, man, keep doing your thing. And I look forward to seeing y'all next time right here on Instagram Live for Candidate Conversations with Hancho J, all right? All right. Yes, sir. Keep, keep, your, head up, keep your head up, my boy. Yeah. All right.